Dear friends, uh, myself Dr. Niki Agrawal from MMA Dr. Vasantrao Kaur Medical College. I am ortho resident from there. I am presenting a short case of knee. Uh, so my patient, uh, so my diagnosis, the patient is the uh, anterior instability, most probably due to anterior cruciate ligament insufficiency with anterolateral instability with medial and lateral meniscus tears. Uh, disabling the patient with his daily activities in walking and inability to... So when we ask you the diagnosis in a short case, we usually expect the short diagnosis. So in an OPD setup you are sitting and you are writing on the OPD card, this is the diagnosis. This is what we expect. For that discussion, you may think about other factors in case they are required. But this is your short diagnosis. What would you write on this OPD card after you have to examine this case? My diagnosis is left knee ACL tear with uh, medial and lateral meniscus tear. Both meniscus tear and anterior cruciate tear. You were asked only to examine the knee joint in this case? Uh, you were asked particularly or? Particularly. Uh, I was asked particularly to examine only knee. Was there some other findings which I am observing? He is also having some neurological problems. Okay, so you were asked only to yes. concentrate on the knee joint. All right. Now, how do you justify this diagnosis? Uh, so I will justify. <coughs> so I will justify before you go on. You see, there are certain problems which can happen distally, or they can be revealed distally. In addition to the instability part or a knee injury leading to a neurological. So please do not say that I was only asked to examine the knee. The distal neurological deficit or distal vascular deficit becomes a part of your knee examination. To give you an example, it's uh, very common to have a common peroneal nerve injury associated with posterior, uh, posterolateral corner injuries. So you cannot say that I, was, I did not see that. It's a part of your knee examination. From history, the patient is having a... No, oh, I think you answer his question. Do you think uh, was the first thing which attracted my attention as soon as I suspected this patient was in the foot? Because I had not examined the knee and I felt that there is something wrong with the foot. That is the major component that is coming in the picture. Is it related or is it entirely different? It is not related. Not at all related. Yes, okay. Is there any problem since birth? Is it unilateral or bilateral? This, this neurological problem. Sir, why like this? So this, this also you, this is in your favor. The injury, the injury is unilateral, but the neurological deficit is bilateral and symmetrical. Okay. Okay. So now you just the diagnosis. So on the basis of history, the patient is giving the history of all. Uh, he was standing on a chair and he fell from the chair directly on the knee uh, two and a half months back. He developed the swelling immediately half hour after the fall and uh, the relatives had to get him up and uh, make him... What is that sit. typical book picture history which is usually seen in this case? Where the diagnosis of ACL is it fitting into that pattern or is it not precisely fitting into that? What is the classical? Is it precisely fitting into the typical history of ACL? Is the history supporting your diagnosis? Or in a short case, you have to hit the nail on the head. You have to choose points which are highly pathognomonic of the current diagnosis. Our discussion is just for about 10 minutes. So is this a very important history? Yes, so the patient was unable to stand on his own okay. and he developed swelling immediately after the trauma. What sort of swelling? So immediately means within a minute, within, then within within half, half an hour. Within half an hour. Yes. So within half an hour, if a tense swelling develops, Usually be a hemat process, right? so that is highly suggestive of it. Yes, yes, yes. There is a possibility. So that type of swelling was there. Yes. Then proceed further. So this is the point in the history, it's all right. So this is not a very common history though, falling from a chair and maybe sustaining an ACL here, but okay, let's yes. see further. On the basis of examination. On the basis of whatever is most important. Uh, 
so on the basis of examination, I examined the patient in uh, standing, sitting and supine position. Once again, in the short case, you need not say spread it back. I just tell the, hit the nail on the head. Uh, Time is short. You see, in 30 minutes, we have to present three cases. Long cases, sometimes they are justified in saying that, but just simply tell us the examination. Uh, so I have got findings. Yeah, that's good. Uh, test uh, positive on left side. Okay. Entire road test positive on left side. And dual uh, shift test is positive. These are the in support of my entry to shift ligament insufficiency. In support of Before you perform this Lechman test, yes, sir. what did you observe? As Dr. Basin had pointed out, that it can be a fallacious Lechman test sometimes. What did you observe before performing the Lechman test? Take him right down, please. Make the relaxed position. And tell me what did you observe or examine before performing this judgment. So I make my patient uh, relax and do it. do it. You said I did this. Yeah. Other than I will make simply do it. Same for So I will patient, make my patient comfortable and, and ask him to relax the, the right, right. Yes, sir. So I will flex the knee to 20 degrees. I will hold the femur with my one hand. Oh, you see as we were discussing, I think we were highlighting that a PCL injury can be confused with an ACL injury. Yeah. But you are not listening to this selective. So, before performing this ACL test, you should be sure of one thing that uh, this Dutchman is not because of a PCL but because of ACL only. What will you do for that? That is a very important uh, event which should proceed before you test for the anterior instability or length uh, so Do something to convince us that. Have you understood the question? Yes, sir. Do it rather than talking. Do it. So I will place the need to do no, no, it. I think you are not uh, right. Uh, I, so anybody can correct them or should we tell them the right answer? No, no, no. Let somebody come, and, come, and, come forward and uh, come forward and try to correct them. What is required before doing a classical test? Do it, do it, do it. Let us ask. Ah, so very nice. You see, he is, but he is demonstrating his called this loud sign. You stand at the level of the tibial tuberosity to reduce the error of parallax. And then what do you observe? See, normally the tibial tuberosities are at the same level. So if tibial tuberosity on one side has gone backward, that indicates that there could be a PCL and during your testing of Dashman, this may be a fallacious Dashman test. So you have to ensure this. And the second important thing is, this is one, this is on inspection. What is the second important thing on palpation which you have to ensure before performing the anterior yeah. Do it. I think you were trying to tell me that first. So you put it into words. Tibial step off. Tibial step off. First, try to put it in the normal side. Anybody else uh, should, wants to do it or should I demonstrate? Somebody can come and uh, demonstrate this anterior tibial step off. Do it on the normal side and show us all. So you just move your finger on one side. Don't look at the But you can what you are doing is you are rolling your finger from femoral condyle to the tibia and as you find port down you find the tibia is about 7 to 10 millimeters in thickness. you are not comparing with the medial side you don't have to do this no it is only on this side and you find that the anterior tibia has slightly forward this is the normal so now on that side what do you observe Side who fails? So looks like that. Just confirm my finding. It appears that the compared to the other side.
mic. Okay, so uh, probably has a lateral meniscus tear on this side. So if you have to feel, do it on the medial side. If you feel the medial side, you have to press all along the medial femoral condyle and tear border. And there is a video Then only can I show it to This guy. So you go along the medial anterior border of the medial femoral condyle keep coming down and this is where you hit the tibia. So there is a shelf of tibia anterior to this. Okay? So there is about 7 to 10 and a step out there is one can feel it. You do it the same thing. What happens is sometimes when the knee is swollen, you don't feel the condyle, you just go along the skin. So it is important to be pressing the condyle. Then only will you reach the tibia. You should be along the bone. If you do it here, you may feel it different. If you press it along the bone, then you feel there is a step of here. This is the step of here. If you do it like this, you have to press it here. This you reach the shelf, then the tibia. And if you do it on this side, it's almost the same. Very well. There is a step. Can anybody be appreciate? You have to press on the femoral condyle. Then you should be able to reach the shelf of tibia. Sure that uh, there is no PCL injury. Now you, your test is likely to be more reliable now. You must rest the regimen now. For Lashman, I will flex the knee to 20 degrees. I will hold the femur with one hand and uh, I will hold the tibial deprocity with the other hand. I will stabilize the femur and will tra anteriorly translate the tibial hand. Sure. Today we are moving alright, but that thumb should be on the medial tibial pad. Same area which where you were feeling this type of yeah. there. Alright. Okay. Grab this. Yes. Then you can appreciate the movement. Now I just want to ask a little question at this stage. Which is a clinical situation when this test is most reliable? Like when compared to other tests of this case. Acute injury. 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 Acute where it will be, this will be the probably the only test which is most alive. So now, so now you said uh, that she also has a medial meniscus and meniscus here. Yes, sir. Both are meniscus here. Both are meniscus here. Just to find them out. Uh, sir, I will flex the knee to 90 degree. I will palpate uh, both the joint lines. I will start uh, palpating from tibial diversity going medially. The direction seems to be. <laughs> First mark it with a pen. What is the correct method of palpating a joint line? In fact, many students are not able to demonstrate this in the examination. Tell us how to demonstrate the joint line. So the right start, method of demonstrating the joint line. I think, I think uh, uh, this is a very, very basic step. But all of us feel that there is a lot of faltering on this. I request Dr. Basin to classically show it. So, feel the 
dreamer and the tibia. You don't start from the tibia tibialis. You always, you can feel the curve of the femur, then the flat tibia. Then you go all along it, feeling a soft area between the two sides. That soft area is where the joint is meniscus. So that is the area you should be able to feel all along. Ideally, you should mark it with a pen before you put that jar. When you are doing it, marking it, then only will you realize that this is the condylar of the femur, this is where it is going, and this is where the joint is. Okay? And then you can slightly move the joint by a pen and agree to see the movement occurring yeah. between the right bones. So, this is a pain in the posterior part. And here we go there. Probably there is a bucket. Probably there is a bucket at it. Then you can get it at both ends. So, in uh, very young children, when the infrapetalar fat pads are not very prominent, you see a depression there. Like the two eyes on the side of the ligament of the This is because of the normal joint has a negative hydrostatic pressure and the skin is pulled inside. But after uh, a certain age, 35, 40, particularly in ladies, those depressions disappear because of the infrapetalar fat pad becomes bigger. But you can very nicely see in young children. Even otherwise, you can put your finger on that and then proceed on the medial to later side. So demonstrate the signs for municipal tears. So there is tenderness on both sides, you say? The tenderness is on uh, medial joint line. Lateral joint line don't have tenderness. But in support of lateral joint line, uh, the macmorris is positive on lateral side. Macmurray is positive on the lateral side and the tenderness is uh, positive on the medial side. It does not have tenderness on the lateral side. Actually, lat joint line tenderness is much more reliable oh, than a Macmurray. So that diagnosis of lateral meniscus, I not examining the lateral joint, but as you can say, if there is no tenderness on the lateral joint line, probably lateral meniscus should be done. We have elicited the detection. So, since it is a neurological case, as you said, both sides are involved. I'd also like to, like to point out one more thing. You must perform this test on the other side also. Yes, sir. There's a possibility that there's a muscular paralysis and the other knee also may be having similar findings. Particularly in this case, it is much more important. So he doesn't have these so findings on the left or the right knee. Now, uh, what next? Oh, you have not completed the test for instability. So, can you demonstrate the other tests? Anterior draw test. We will shift. For anterior draw test, I will place the needle 90 degrees with foot in the rotation. I will stabilize the foot by other sitting or by asking some... See, when you are asked to demonstrate in the exam, I think the commentary is not needed because there are four examiners or two examiners watching you and they are just watching whether you are doing the maneuver correctly. Unless you are asked to narrate also, which is rare, just by observing we can make out whether you are doing correctly or not. Okay. So, so we are checking your knowledge in the psychometric domain. Cognitive you already have. You actually have to do it in choice. Prefer to start demonstrating with the limb, knee, uh, foot in internal rotation, the tibia in internal rotation? Neutral rotation. Huh? Neutral. 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 No, no, the same side. Does that make a difference or not? Difference or not? What difference does it make if the posterior medial complex?
So what will you do for it? What did you ask? So I asked him to relax. See for the I have to do it from extension to patient. So, what will you do now? Sir, since he is a... Uh, since he is a worker uh, and his daily activities are hampered due to the instability, I will give you an option uh, for uh, surgical management. From the diagnosis? Sir, I will, I will come, for, come from the diagnosis from X-rays and MRI. What can you expect to see in an X-ray? After an X-ray, I will see for any fractures or any emergent fractures. And in lateral X-ray, I will see the tibial scope. Okay. Any specific fractures? Any specific uh, in an X-ray? Apart from the uh, and all, yeah, the 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 Lateral tibial Lateral capsule over. That's an important thing to understand. If you have a locked meniscus, you will not get a positive, probably a positive reversion. Then you should be locked. That means that should be locked. That situation, of course, will not be very common. But the patient may not come in that situation to you, but you must know all these things. Signal of ACL which uh, confirms our diagnosis of ACL here. 
The red zone, white zone is a different situation. Which, which part of the meniscus does the tear? First, first one is here that it is posterior ligament. Posterior ligament. Then in the posterior also, does it start on the superior surface, in the mid substance or on the inferior surface? Which tears uh, may not be picked up in orthostatic? Sir, inferior tears cannot be Often the tears start inferior. Superior surface may be intact. I'd like to have your views on this uh, argument or debate which we are having. Uh, clinical diagnosis in. Yeah, clinical diagnosis in. Uh, MRI is not always absolutely essential, but the times keep changing, so probably. What I would say 20 years ago, there was no MRI. 1990, when I started doing arthroscopy, there was no hardly an MRI, which could be worth, you know, commenting. Yeah. One can do an arthroscopy in clinical diagnosis. Sir. Yeah, but, but what about, there was no MRI, there was no question. Yeah. yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, that's right. If you are not able to document and you have a you can take no, a no, photograph. No, 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 no. You can take no, no, an no, 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 no. Your findings, what you record, are sufficient to say that yes, to examine it, these were the findings. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, in 1990 when I started doing that was not available. So today time you can say, but but not on not on the academic reason. That is one. Yes. My own. It is an indirect evidence of the ECL accept which given direction. But for now the patients are very intelligent, the advocates are running behind them. Dr. Sivaj, actually what we were discussing is a typical case where there are classical findings of instability. Yes. Only in those situations I generated this debate. Not yes. in all situations where their clinical diagnosis itself could be questionable. Yes. I talked of a situation where there is a classical ACL tear, medical patient is complaining of instability. The signs are positive, probably on those. Just to generate some interest in no, that, that situation. That, that uh, clinically is okay. But scientifically, you must have a documentation pre-hand before you. So there can be a difference of opinion on this, but I think they can have their own views. Easily, after many times, conclusions. For conclusions, nothing has to be done. Actually, if you get a MRI of a normal knee also, as Dr. rightly said, there can be many other findings which can frighten you and which may be of some so clinical do, significance. Do you think that so will conclusions can be seen. Do you think that will change the treatment? Sometimes they say like linear fracture is also there, some depression, which is not seen in x-ray. So if that finding is there, is it going to change our line of treatment? No. That does not change the line of treatment. Whatever, sometimes the MRI does indicate microfracture, compressions and all yes. those things. Now we have treated the ACL even before the MRI. And those findings must have been there. Fact, that uh, doesn't change the See, in fact, what is affecting the patient is instability. That is why even those KT arthrometer and other things, they can indirectly diagnose the instability by putting pressure on the tibia. The basic reason for doing any investigation, typically speaking on scientific grounded, it has changed the direction of the treatment. So if the treatment advised before investigation and after investigation is still the same, actually that investigation was not needed for scientific reasons. Sir, 
नमस्कार पहले सर्वान मजा सा विचार ना है कि मज़ा एम आर आई का आड़ला है डॉक्टर जयंत फुलकर सर ने भी दाखिल होता ऑर्थोमैटिक सर्जन बिडकॉस्को हॉस्पिटल नासिक रोड यानी माला सजेसन दिया कि तुम्हें एम आर आई का डॉक्टर वसंतराव पवार एम आर आई का डॉक्टर तुषार गवर जी संगित विचारपूस विचार मैं एम आर आई बगितर मैं संगित कि तुम्हें गोड़ग्या खाट की जी है मैं गादी ती तुम फाटले है तेजन तुम्हें नस जी डैमेज है मज़ा असा सर विचार सगैंप विचार एक प्रश्न कि जर मजी पया मुंट एकदम क्लियर है मैं मांडी घलून बसू शको पास्त वे बस ले माला लंब पाय के पयाला दुखत उद्या जर मज़ा ए सी एल च ऑपरेशन कराव लगे मैं मैं ए सी एल च ऑपरेशन मोबाइल मध्य बगित कशा पद्धति ने करता पूर्ण मुमेंट्स बगित ती मुट्स बगित मैं नेटवर्क मुमेंट पूर्ण मुमेंट्स बगित बगितर सर मैं कि आपका पाय व्यवस्थित है पेनर अपने पूरे का तकलीफ वाला नको मैं तेवर विचार I think uh, uh, his question is that uh, he is having all the movements in the knee, and two orthopedic surgeons have advised that uh, there is something wrong in the knee. By doing surgery, you should not uh, land up with more problems. That is what is his main worry. That's why I am not saying. You may have had a surgery or a slim model, but you have five years to heal to it. रोड दुनिया उटिटी आप दौड़ सकते थे नहीं आप दौड़ लेते थे इस पैर के बावजूद कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं था ये जो पैर भी दिक्कत है ना थोड़ा ये पैर में वो देखो हाथ पैर भी थोड़ा टेढ़ा है इसका कमजोरी भी है ये कब से पैर में प्रॉब्लम इससे कोई दौड़ वौड़ लगाने में कोई दिक्कत नहीं पैर में पैर आता है ना तो वी हैव टू कंसिडर दिस फैक्टर ऑल्सो दैट ए पेशेंट हु इज नॉट वेरी एक्टिव You see, every ACL deficient knee probably does not need surgical intervention. The patient is barely able to walk because of any reason, and he has an ACL tear. We are not treating the MRI. We have to see the patient in totality and see what is his present functional status. For pair ke karan hi usko problem hai. We must find out what is his status. Can he run and catch a bus? All these things. Who should be smart? Who should be smart? Who should be smart? Who should be smart? हाँ बस वही है वो देखना पड़ेगा प्रॉब्लम विच एज वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दी रोल ऑफ एम आर आई It has been observed number of times that after the injury, when the patient comes to our, maybe after three weeks, four weeks, when you do an MRI, you find that there is a lot of marrow edema. And I am not a person doing scopies, but then when I have talked to couple of orthoscopies, what they say that when there is a lot of marrow edema in the area where you are going to, are, are going to make your tunnels. Number of times the uh, post-op recovery is not very smooth. Correct. Correct. So I think MRI has a role to give you idea about the, uh, you know, the uh, marrow edema. Yeah, inflammatory response. Inflammatory response. response. Yeah. Then what, you can. What, so what so, standard advice is that 
the information should have settled down, the patient should have a reasonable range of motion. Yes. Then only one should go and do an ECM. Yes. So the same thing was told even before the MRI came. So we follow the same principle. See, so you yes. don't but treat ACM on day one. one. You always treat after five to six weeks. After adequate immobilization and when the pain goes and the patient regains almost full range of motion only then. By that time normally all these things confusion and all will subside. That is another yeah. So the MRI has that always. role that it gives you an idea about the uh, marrow edema, whether there is inflammation so that whether you are in a safe time zone to go ahead and do the surgery. I think that is one of the answers in, in case you are asked about whether MRI is absolutely necessary, I think that is one of the reasons that you can reason out to say that yes, we were justified in doing an MRI. And the inferior side tail in the meniscus, which you many a times may not be able to pick up very easily in an orthoscopy, especially the posterior horn. These are the orthoscopic blind spots which you should know. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir, can, can I speak for five minutes on, on this issue? Sure, sure. Okay, very well. Uh, uh, thank you very much. We have discussed a lot on the knee case, but uh, in my opinion, the knee case only is not ACL and BCL and uh, two collaterals and many spines. Here the knee joint is not stop. You have a lot of patients with short cases, where there is a synovial involvement, there is no joint involvement. So in those situations, especially the students, no pertaining to any test. In in those situations, the student must know how to test the temperature, how to test the tenderness, where to feel the synovium, how to do the petal tear, how to feel the effusion what is to be done with the effusion and how to do the tenderness. Because a very important and essential part of the knee is salvionum uh, and the capsule also. Maybe associated with ACL, may not be. Because in the knee case, there may be tuberculosis, salivary effusion, there can be pyogeny, there can be so many things. So, not by doing, knowing four, five, six tests, means uh, the knee. Knee means when you present a short case of the knee, there can be... How many people can tell here where to palpate the synovial membrane in the knee joint? Medial. So, pyramidal. Why medial? Because medial has the most thick muscle. Why, why medial is, is so thick muscle? Vastus medial. Why we palpate on medial side? Why not lateral anterior? No, no, one. Yes. Yes. So we palpate on the medial when I have seen that. Although the muscle is very thick, but it is the first muscle which get wasted. And we can palpate the synovial uh, <coughs> membrane. You can roll in your finger. That is one point which I want to add. I am not saying any test and anything else. Secondly, when you do uh, tenderness, you should do with your bone. Like this. Not like this. We have two hands. We have any inflamed area. Two. Number three, you must palpate the joint line which has been discussed. If it is anteriorly, it is osteoarthritis. If it is posteriorly, likely it is to be a meniscus. Then synovial effusion, as Dr. Gautam has mentioned, a minimal fluid in the joint. In children, by standing, you can see the fullness of the eyes of the joint. But in adult, if there is a minimum fluid, then you have to just press and collect it in the joint and see. The patellar tap will be negative. When patellar tap will be negative? Because these are the examination questions. When the patellar tap is negative, although there is a sign of diffusion, the tap is negative. So when, when there is a tense in arthrosis, or tense fluid, it will be negative. And another? There is a flexion deformity. There is a flexion deformity. 
Any, anything else? If there is a tense, if there is a flexion deformity? So, Joseph. Sir, absence Huh? Not abscess. There is this sinus diffusion when the tap is negative. One is it is negative when it is too tense. The another is negative when the fluid is minimal. Then also put another tap will be negative because when you do the tap and if the patient is having a cyst on the posterior side, the old fluid goes on the back side if it is connected with the uh, joint line. You understand? So the tap will be negative on those sides. Those side. Thirdly, the student most important. He had a, he had made a suicidal attempt for the examination. After the examination, he said, "I will do arthroscopy." The examiner asked, "What you will do?" "I will do arthroscopy." He he knows the patient. He knows the clinical diagnosis. He has seen the MRI. This is the inference which is taken by the examiner. Otherwise, he should have asked for the X-ray for the MRI. Although he is sure, but he should not. Nor immediately jump. What I will do? Totally wrong. Without confirmation. And many a time, I have been examining the MD for a long time, many a time you jump. And then there is no scope. That you are jumping, you are telling the right diagnosis. You are telling the right treatment. But you are not confirming the diagnosis. Either by the x-rays or the blood or anything. Thirdly, when there is a sign of infusion, one is you can see by the tap. Secondly, you can see by the palpation that fluctuation is positive. What is the confirmatory number? Ultrasound. Ultrasound will not much tell whether it is a fluid, whether it is a blood, whether it is a pus. Aspiration. So when you aspirate, what you do with that aspirate? You have aspirated 10 cc, 20 cc, 30 cc. What, what three things you should do with that is Routine, routine microscopy. So you send it for culture. All culture should be biopsy and you do the biopsy test must. Because you have already done an invasive method, you have put, a, put in a needle inside that joint. So you must take maximum inference, not that just to see the show the examiner or to show the students that you have aspirated, maybe interpreted, it may be passed, it may be And then all these tests which has been discussed in great detail I see So the tear, the tenderness I already said, anterior and posterior, locking. What is locking? Enable to extend. First thing, first thing. Or flexion. No, why not? Why locking is not reflection? You can lock either way. When we say that the knee, knee is locked, why extension. it is always in extension? There is no locking in flexion? Any answer? Hello? Yes? Joint spaces? Yes, because the moment we start flexing, the space started increasing. It is in extension, full extension, the joint space is narrowest. That is why the locking, when we call it locking, the patient is unable to fully extend the knee joint. That is the reason that we call locking in extension. Then, uh, no comment he has made on the wasting of the muscles. We always must always make a comment about what is about condition of the wasting of the muscles around the knee joint, especially the high ones. And uh, the infusion I have said, the temperature you must always do. do. So these are few things which I have added, not to ACL or PCL. When you may get a case of sign of infusion, uh, not necessarily always get a patient with this will be Yeah, I think I'll slightly tend to briefly disagree with you on one account that once we are dealing with a particular clinical situation, we have come to know particularly in a short case, the examination of the knee can take one hour lecture like this. Everything, you should describe everything, 
time is short. So you have to finally kind of concentrate hello, hello. and focus in that direction more rather than describing ah, anything. Bolle, bolle. There is no sensible effusion if you say metal type is negative, I think that's the next time. As a, as a theory like there, it is all right, all those things you are telling, Monday all students should know that if there is a fusion, aspiration should be done, somebody. but not otherwise that in every case you must mention every finding of the knee joint. Prepared, prepared. So, what do you talk about? In case a different case comes, no, no, in case a different case comes, we focus Hello? in that direction. I am just telling that not Hello? pertaining to this case. When we have to not know that many uh, knee cases, we do not have many knee cases. I just wanted to express that in knee cases, we should have look on these also. If it is in this particular case, no tab, nothing is required. But uh, sometimes in the fusion, sometimes in knee cases, different Thank you. Thank you very much for the faculty. And, uh,